Hello again, this is Lino Tadros. In the previous video, we worked with the Azure AI Founder using audio. In this video, we're going to use vision and see if we can actually deal with images and see what kind of models can actually allow us to work well um, recognizing the information inside of an image itself. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I am back here in my portal. Let me go ahead and launch the Azure AI Foundry. I'm going to open up the studio in here. And at this time, I would like to see if I can go to my playground. And remember, uh, I'm not going to use any special playground. I'm just going to go to the chat playground itself. And I want you to remember that we have GPT-40. We are lucky because we have GPT-40. That means it's a multimodal, that it has audio, it has vision, has text, all in, in uh, inside of it. So I, I don't have to actually get a specific version of a specific model like a GPT-4, for instance, to be able to do that. Automatically, because it recognizes this as GPT-40, you'll notice the attachment in here at the bottom right of the screen that I can attach a file. So let's say, for instance, I already scanned on my phone here a little receipt that I got from a restaurant, and I would like to see if it can actually recognize what's going on inside of there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And we'll go ahead and find out where my receipt is. I think I called it test receipt somewhere. There you go, test receipt. Let me go ahead and open it up. And it's not very readable and it actually has a lot of different uh, kinks in it. So wanted to find out what the system can actually do for me. So I'm gonna actually come in here and say, um, can you explain the content of this receipt? All right, let's go ahead and see if GPT-40 the vision portion of it can actually figure this out for us as well. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll wait just a few seconds and hopefully it will come back. Uh, it will say certainly and it was able to find out that it's coming in from the Dixie Cream Cafe. There's the address that it got from it. There's the phone number. The date was November 22nd. The table number, table of number of guests the server name, everything inside of there as well, including everything we've ordered in here and the total 5139, which is correct. That is what's inside of the receipt itself, even the thank you. And then the summary at the end, the receipt shows that the two guests had breakfast and blah, 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 blah. And it was 5139, including tax. Did a pretty good job with that as well. All right. So now I would like to use that in a prompt flow and see if I can actually do something like this with it as well. All right, let's go back to prompt flow and I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new prompt flow in here. We'll keep it a simple standard flow is fine. We'll say create and this one we'll call it, for instance, receipt flow. All righty. And we'll say create. We'll wait a few seconds and that the flow is very simple. Usually it will come back with a joke and an echo, which I don't need either one of them. <laughs> so I'm going to click on the joke or say bye bye to you. And the echo as well will say bye bye to you as well. All right. Can I actually do this based on GPT-40? Absolutely. The GPT is very powerful, has the vision portion, but I wanted to show you something a little bit more complicated on this one. So let me save this as for right now and go back to models. What happens? Let me save, make sure it's finished saving. Okay. And now if I go to the models, what happens if you're actually trying to use a model that has multiple versions of it and only one of them including includes, for instance, the vision portion, like the four, for instance, not the 4.0, but the four. Notice if I say deploy the model and let's deploy uh, the base model in here and I'm going to look for GPT, not 4.0, but 4. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. 4. And I'm going to say confirm this guy. There's a lot of different versions in here. One of the things that people miss on this one, if I say customize, for instance, and I would like to find out where is the one that is not only text, but also has vision. If you bring this down, you will notice that there is only the Turbo 2024 4 or 9 in here. At, at the time, of course, of this recording of this video. And that's the reason because of the global, global standard deployment type only has the turbo um, available for it. If I change this to make it standard, I would have access to all of them. So notice there's a lot of different versions. The one I'm interested in is the vision one. If you don't choose this one, you will not be able to do this with the receipt if you end up using GPT-4 itself, not 4.0, okay? So I'm going to say that I would like to use the vision in here. We'll connect to a specific um, AI resource. Um, we'll use, for instance, the West US right now. It is not available in the East US or East US 2 um, uh, as of the recording of this video. So I'm going to send it to the, uh, to the West Coast. And I think this is good enough for me and we'll say deploy. And then we will give it a, just a few seconds and it's successful, as you can see, and we are in good shape. All right, let's go back to our prompt flow and let's start using this specific deployed model. 
All right, so where do I start? Well, while we're playing around in here, let's go ahead and start the compute session because it takes a couple of minutes. And while it's doing that, we can actually go ahead and change things. First of all, what will be the input? The input will not be text. It will not be a string. So first of all, it will be a receipt. Um, that means it could be a picture, a photo, whatever. So you can call this whatever you want. I Sometimes I call it receipt. <laughs> I'm just going to call it photo, okay? You can call it anything you want. And then it's not going to be a string. It's going to be an image right there. And this is where we're going to upload the image in here because this is a completion. This is not a chat. But of course, you can make it a chat as well. That's not a problem. And then it's not a joke. Of course, the output is going to be output. Let me put that in here just to get ready for all of these things. All right. My compute session is running and I'm good to go. That means more tools will show up in here. Excellent. Let's click on that and look at this uh, thing inside of preview right now as of the recording. Azure OpenAI GT, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision. So I'm going to add this guy. We'll give it a name. We'll call it Vision. Uh, we'll call it to Receipt, for instance. Uh, that's the name of my step in here. I'm going to set it up to the connection. Remember, now I have two connections. I have the regular one that I started in the previous videos, which is in the East US 2. But there is this one for the... Uh, for the vision for four gpt4 that has to be in the west us because there is no equivalent to it in the east coast as of this recording so i'm going to click on that the deployment name it will see that it is going to be gpt4 okay i'm going to leave the temperature as one to give it as creative as possible we'll make this 1000 token is fine nothing else need to change in here and then the system prompt would be as an ai assistant your task involves interpreting images and responding to questions about the image Remember to provide accurate answers based on the information present in the image. And then, can you tell me uh, what the image uh, depicts? I'm going to change that. That's going to be part of the user. I'm going to say, uh, scan the receipt, uh, receipt, and um, and tell me the date, uh, the name, uh, the vendor name. Let's say vendor name, uh, total amount, and what else do we want from there? Uh, we want the vendor name, total amount, date, and and we'll say number of people, number of people dining. All right, that's good enough for me. And I'm going to be passing the image here as the input as well. Let's go ahead and validate this. Of course, as you can see from here, the image is going to be the only variable. So when I say validate, the image should be the only thing that will be available in here. There it is, the image input. Where is that coming from? If I click on here, that will be the input of the photo that I passed it in the input. All right. I should be in good shape now. The only thing left, if I go to the output, there is no echo anymore. So I need to change this to make it the vision receipt.output. And there is my graph. I will give it an image in the input. The vision will take it and will try to get me the date, the vendor name, total amount, and the number of people dining. And the output will be spit out from there. All right, let me save all of this. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. So how do we try it? We go to the value in here in the input. I'm going to click on the upload. And let's go get the same receipt again. There it is. There is the receipt. It will be right here. And moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and click on run. And we'll give it a few seconds. Once this have a green check mark, it will give us the output and we'll make sure that this is working correctly. And indeed, it took almost like 10 seconds. But if I click on the view outputs in here, the receipt provides the following information. Date November 22nd, which is correct. Vendor name is Dixie Cream Cafe. Correct. Total 5139. That's correct. Number of people dining, six guests. That's incorrect. <laughs> Please note that the receipt image is a bit crumbled but the requested information is legible and has been so the number of guests was two it put a guest in here again it was crumbled so um actually the table number was six but the number of guests was two so again you can actually make a clearer uh, picture of the scanned version and try to actually run this again and hopefully it will give you the two but the majority of the data in here is correct but you can see where we are with that stuff at this point all right, I hope this was useful. I'm going to stop this recording at this point. The next video, I would like to deploy this. And uh, I would like to show you how to, re to use this re in real life using an API from the outside, like something like Curl or Postman or Fiddler or something else, or from your own application, for instance, from a web app or something like that. Let's go ahead and do that.